One of my biggest complaints about all these shoot 'em ups, besides the fact most of them aren't very original, is the fact a lot of them lack power ups. At this point in shoot 'em up history, its power ups are nothing. Face it, Xevious was a long time ago, and Star Force's auto fire power up is pitiful in an era of Gradius. Thankfully, that itch is finally scratched with today's game, B Wings, where they unbelievably let you start with 10 different cannons to go into battle with, which also lends itself easily for more replayability. That is what I want to say, but unfortunately the rest of the game is utter garbage and prime Kasoge. Next to Thexter, this is easily the ugliest game on the Famicom so far. Instead of an interesting alien world or Earth's landscape, they decided to go with the blue dimension with random squares scattered everywhere like a kitchen floor. And what the hell are these things that block my path throughout the game? Are they ships? Robots? Buildings? What are they? I can't tell, and even more so with the boss at the end. This feels like the kind of game a programmer made in 40 minutes waiting for the food they ordered to be delivered to the offices, and the other programmers and employees were impressed enough that they slapped a bunch of cannons to play with in the beginning to give it a gimmick. But lo and behold, it's actually based off an arcade game by Data East, which also makes this their first game that they published themselves. Before, they had two games they licensed out to Namco for some reason. I mean, you give Namco big hits like Burger Time, yet you keep crap like this to yourself. And speaking of crap, the arcade game is even worse, where we find out the B stands for battle. I can think of a few B words to describe this game, but I guess battle is fine enough. At least the Famicom version has some cannons to try out in the beginning. Everything in the arcade version is slow. You start out with the wimpy vanilla form, and the size of the arcade resolution just doesn't help in this game's favor. Also a worthless perspective element was excluded from the home port. This is also the first game Data East ported themselves instead of the company SAS Sakata, who did the two previous ones. It's unfortunate that the contract developer has made a better produced and better looking game than the big arcade powerhouse. Maybe that's why SAS Sakata are still around and Data East is nowhere to be seen. <laughs> Sure, the cannons are the most interesting thing about this game, but their quality ranges from just flat out terrible, to mediocre, to alright, to the only one you should use. Seriously, the hammer is the only one to go with. A strong firing rate, deals out some amazing damage, and a freaking shield? But whatever you do, don't press B, because you'll lose your current cannon and turn into a vanilla piece shooter. At the very least, if you get hit, you'll just lose your cannon and turn into your vanilla self, and there are replacement cannons along the way to help mend that wound. It can even make the option to remove your cannon worth it. So Data East gets at least a gold star for that choice. But that's not enough to save this game from being debatably the worst shoot 'em up I've seen so far on the Famicom. And you'd think the cannons would be enough to save it, and hey, there's even a continue option. But the continue option is worthless because you start the level flying past a strip where you choose your cannon in the beginning. Implying you can gain a new cannon, but you press every button and nothing works. Select? Nope. Left? Uh-uh. Anything else? Not that I can see. So either it's fooling me that I can get a new cannon, or it's some button combination you gotta press in order to activate it. Either way, that is some supreme bullshit. This is exactly what happens when you make games to cash in on trends and not because you like them. Data East's career was mostly away from shoot 'em ups, but from what I can see, Data East would make some more after the so-called golden years of shoot 'em ups. So I'll leave B-Wings as an example of practice makes perfect.